Okay, let's be clean and clear about this. As queer people, sometimes it can be a challenge to be comfortable in our own skin. And that's why Clean and Clear have been proud partners of the Albert Kennedy Trust for the past four years. A charity that helps some of the most vulnerable people in the LGBTQIA community. Today, we're meeting some real skin allies who are proud members of the queer community. They're sharing their journey to self-confidence and being proud of the skin they're in. Being a real skin ally is about empowering yourself and others to feel confident in the skin they're in. So you can be your best and most fabulous self. <laughs> baby, 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 let's cut to the chase. Tell me all about you. Hi, I'm Marshall. I'm a creative living in London from Leicester. My pronouns are he slash they. Hi, I'm Angie, I'm 24 years old, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm from London. I'm a writer, actor, DJ, rapper, TikToker, and Mandarin translator. My name's Alicia, I'm 22 years old, my pronouns are they, them, and I am a TikTok creator, mainly looking at comedy and just my life in general and being queer. I love creating art. I know it sounds so like broad and out there, but I just love making things. I just remember doing a TikTok and I was like, tell me any way I can get into industry. Like, what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. And it kind of blew up and I got so many like responses. Being, you asked like, and you received. Do this, do that, do that, literally. Yeah. I feel like in some ways the reason why like I'm a rapper and why I do what I do is because someone's got to do it. Like, it's long overdue. I guess I sort of make a lot of like, quite sort of like UK rap influence. I'm just doing what I do because I want other girls to see me because I'm already getting messages from people being like, you're such inspiration. You mm -hmm. made me realize that I should be pursuing music and I shouldn't be scared to do it. And it's like, that's yeah, exactly what I want to see. Things. If you don't know, you never know. So, you know, you're doing it for yourself and you're doing it for others as well. Mm -hmm. The opinions that people have on who trans women are, what we do, what we go through, is so different to the reality of what we go through. You know, by rapping and by making the kind of music that I do, I'm trying to really like shine a light on it and show people what we're actually about. I literally just started posting videos that I thought were funny and were entertaining to me. It was literally just like a spare of the moment thing like, oh, TikTok seems fun, let me do that. And now I'm here, so. So tell me, what was it like being or growing up as a queer kid in Leicester? Growing up, I was very much sheltered. I was also dealing with just being black in yeah. Britain as well uh -huh. at that time. Like, mm -hmm. And I felt like, obviously, not having that representation of both being, like, seeing black and queer media and mm -hmm. seeing that intersectionality made me realise, like, am I OK? I, like, I always felt a bit like, the in a sense, out. yeah, the mm -hmm. odd one out, out of doing that. Like, I couldn't be this because I was black. I was always scared of my skin, like, oh my God, have I got spots here? Have I got spots there? And I think because being different in that sense that you've always have to put your best self out there. And I think that's one of the things in a queer community that we do struggle with as well, is we're always having to be the best of the best, always have to work twice as hard just to get normal rights that people will just normally get. I started meeting my chosen family through so many, through so many routes. My first couple of mates that I call family now, I met through the internet and that started just through like group chats and internet friends. Growing up, you know, I'm a mixed race, half Chinese trans woman. Like, that was nothing for me growing up. When I was younger, it was like, everyone was like, oh, he must be gay, he must be gay. But it's like, no one ever said, like, he must be a girl. No, because... yeah. And when well, everyone's trying to tell you how to feel, it's like, no, this is my life, it's my journey. I'm going through I'm going through my own way, my own time. Exactly. But like, that's also the really beautiful thing about being trans. Like, there's no one set journey. There's no one set path. Like, everyone's is different. Mm -hmm. Before we even get to, like, the external factors and, like, transphobia and all of the different ways to, like, assess that, it starts from within. You know, it starts from, like, dysphoria and that sort of like constant feeling of knowing that like what's happening on the inside, who you are on the inside just doesn't match up with your biology and doesn't match up with what society says your body is supposed to look like. 
that manifests in so many different ways, like laser hair removal that costs a lot of money. <laughs> um, you know, constantly like, doing, doing makeup, I like, just to pop to the shops, and so I'm just like doing a bit of concealer just in case. Baby, hormones. Ugh. Let's talk about it. Does that um, take any negative effects on your skin? It's the opposite, actually. Oh! Like, hormones have made my skin very soft. Oh, man. Very smooth. On a more like, abstract level they've made me feel more comfortable in my skin that being said like i don't think it's necessary to get them at all like i don't think you're not going to be any less of a woman different strokes for different folks exactly you're not going to be any less of a woman or a man mm -hmm. or whatever you're trying to accomplish with hrt my queer experience is just fun i think would be the best way to describe it like being around a lot of queer people um having great relationships with people within the community I would love to know, what would you say to someone who maybe isn't brushed up on the lingo, doesn't really know what it is, what would you say to them? I would probably describe non-binary as being not in the binary, mm -hmm. if, if we're going to break it down. Um, it's that you don't really identify with... He or she. Exactly. Somewhere in the middle. Exactly. Living it up. Yeah. Dancing I mean, you could be drum. more on one side than mm -hmm. the other as well, that's also a thing, but just not feeling like you're exactly one They you have to be put in other. a box. Exactly. Mm. That butterfly. <laughs> exactly, there we go. No moths today, big old butterflies. Exactly. So you've been in a gorgeous relationship for the last eight months. Pre-relationship, what was kind of your headspace like in terms of being out and about, living it up? with your queer identity, like, you know, dating in general? Mm. Like, was it something you felt a little insecure about? Maybe you had to like hide or dim down? Or was it very much like, this is me, this is what I'm doing, like an Olympic? It was a bit of both. Mm -hmm. If I was out like clubbing and stuff, it was very much like, yo, hi, hello. Yeah, you're in your safe space, exactly. it's whatever. But um, anywhere else is very much like, don't perceive me. Really? Please. Yeah, because um, I wasn't out to my parents. So ah, obviously I had to be very careful. Now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I am now. I did it quite quietly. I changed my pronouns on Instagram. I changed my pronouns on TikTok. And then I just made a video. And I was just like, oh, by the way, that's them now. I just kind of said it as it was and then moved on. Cause I don't think that I needed to make it a big thing. And I'd, I don't think we should have to. What advice do you have for maybe the younger generation or anyone who is coming to terms with coming out in general? I think I would say do it in your own time. Mm -hmm. Don't feel like the pressure of obviously with social media and everything and everyone's like, yeah, be out, be proud. Yeah. Don't feel the pressure to do that if you're not ready to. Exactly. Do it when you're ready. I want to show to people that, yes, you can be black and queer. And I kind of want to do that for my younger self inside of me, just to see that stuff and be like, mad, it's cool. There's, there's a lot of things that you can do if you have confidence. Like you might not have the most skills in something, you might not know the most about something, but as long as you have the confidence in yourself and be like, yeah, I can do that, you can do it. And I think that's something that everybody should really carry with them no matter what they're doing, because it works. So tell me, baby, what does being a real skin ally mean to you? Being yourself unapologetically, no matter what, no matter what's happening in your life, I think to just be you is really important. Being a real skin ally means confidence, empowerment, and self-love. Self-love is so important because in a world like this, it's all we have. It's all we have. Pushing for change, being comfortable in the skin that you are, being completely confident in yourself and loving yourself to the point where you're like, you know what, I'm, a, I'm, I'm amazing, I'm cool, I'm iconic. Join us. Be a real skin ally with Clean and Clear, proud supporters of the Alba Kennedy Trust for the past four years.